Welcome, 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 and thank you so much for clicking on my video. I am sorry that I haven't been around for the past few days, but the construction at my house is now over and we can be back in business. And I'm glad I'm back in business because we're seeing some crazy signals going into Friday and they do not look good. I want to be very clear about that early on. You know, I try not to BS things too much around here. I try to tell you what I actually think. And I think that these signals are bad going into Friday. Now, we have to look at this throughout these charts that we're going to look at. We have to really take into consideration what's going on and what these signals can mean because of the 50 basis point cut. And we always said on this channel, what do you need to pay attention to? Well, if they change their tone for some reason and they say, no, we're not going to cut by 25 basis points anymore, we're going to cut by 50. And that is something we are going to get into today as we do some technical analysis for the SPY Qs, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD, and Meta, looking into AMC and GME as well. But stick around because after all that, we're going to get into volatility and there's a major signal you need to be paying attention to with volatility that kind of matches up with this one right here. Let's get into it. All right, now we can jump into the SPY and talk about these ranges. We weren't able to talk about these ranges this week because of the construction going on in my house, uh, but you could have gotten these ranges by being a part of the Patreon. That is the link down in the description. You can still get all the ranges for every stock that we cover. I'm not going to always, 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 you know, life happens and I won't always be able to be on YouTube. So make sure if you really need these ranges, if, they're, if you're really utilizing them to join that Patreon because it's very important. But for tomorrow, we do have the daily expected moves and I want you to notice something very fishy about this before we really look into the technicals or anything like that look how small this is going into a Friday expiration. It is very, very small. So the correct way to read into this is we know that this is our range, 573.33 to the upside. We do have 568.63 to the downside. Very, very small. Only 0.5% maybe in either direction is what is expected by the options market. So the most likely thing we should expect is flatness we should really expect not a ton of movement probably just stuck in this little range that is the most likely thing now the other thing to think about is when we get over to the queues those ranges are actually decent size so this tells me maybe the spy also has a better chance because it's so close if it breaks through one of these lines you could have a 32 percent chance to see something crazy okay so that's just something to pay attention to now let's really get into those signals okay let's really pay attention to what is on our chart here now you guys know i don't pay attention to hourlies i really like 30 minutes i really like two hours but every once in a while if the hourly looks really really clean i'm gonna pay attention to it and right now i'm paying attention because i have this upward movement in price action and the uh, indicators down here are diverging from that. So you're seeing a downward move in your indicator while the price action is moving up. That is divergence. And if that thing confirms tomorrow, well, if that confirms and it has any kind of momentum, you can break through this downside. And guess what? For the week, it makes sense to land down in this area. So I'm a little bit worried about this signal. I'm also taking into consideration that a lot of the time options will expire and you will have some kind of flat day. And then on Monday, you actually see over the week weekend, something bad happens. So this is the big signal I'm paying attention to. I kind of blew it up down here on the RSI. So you can see, yeah, we came above it and then we went straight down from there. So it is on both indicators at the same time. And I'd be paying close attention to it, especially at towards the end of this video, please, if this is important to you with the SPY, tune in towards the end of the video when we're talking about volatility, because we pay attention to when there is a signal with the SPY and an equal signal on volatility at the other side of the table. Now you can see from the cues, they are not going up to all-time highs. This necessarily won't this won't necessarily be some kind of all-time high trap. But what do we say in crash scenarios a lot of the time? Well, a lot of the time you see the spy make some kind of divergence, make that next high, break through to all-time highs, and then create that divergence while the cues actually end up forming a lower high. And we've already formed that lower high. We went and retested that lower high. Are we going to see a little double top here maybe on bigger time frames? We'll see. But the important part for me is paying attention to some fishiness. The fishiness is if the SPY has such a small range, why do the Qs have a bigger range? And they are still within their weekly expected move, by the way. So that is something to pay attention to. But you do have 488.07 to the upside and you do have 478.65 to the downside. So what that tells me is at least the initial thinking that I have towards it is 
the tech sector, you know, tech stocks will be experiencing more volatility tomorrow. There's more implied volatility as far as tech stock tech stocks go, and uh, that's what you really need to pay attention to there. Okay, so there will be a little bit more volatility, at least according to the options market, with this data that we plugged in. Uh, it means that there will be a little bit more implied volatility, so some more rip around type moves for the queues tomorrow. So very keen to pay attention to that kind of thing, just because I trade a lot of tech stocks. It is very good to pay attention to that. Now we can see in front of you, you do have that upward price action and the indicators are again diverging. Again, on the RSI diverging from that path. So that's just really telling you, are you getting tight and just about to see some kind of break? Well, we'll see with a little more price action, but I would really be paying attention to this. It doesn't mean we can't continue to go higher later. It just means this is the signal that we're seeing right now, by the way. This doesn't mean, hey, this is a crash. This means this can be a crash. It doesn't mean it can't base out and turn around. We always pay attention to the signals, right? Anytime we see that signal, we're going to pay attention to it and you're seeing it right now. That could mean a major reversal is coming, but if it turns back around, we'll be talking right back to bullish. The reason that I said that with the cues a second ago is because things like Apple are happening where you're seeing dailies maybe going to curl up, okay? I know we're looking at a daily chart. We're supposed to be talking about, you know, those little daily, uh, Time frames, those daily expected moves for tomorrow, which we give you in the Patreon every single Friday. We give you the daily expected move for stocks like Apple, Tesla, all these other ones. And this is something huge though. So I have to be open to positivity because if this curls up, well, that could curl up and take us higher for a bit of time, but we'll see if we're able to make some kind of divergence. So at this point, right, there's a way down still later on, but for now, we just care about which way the market is actually going. And if Apple can cross up on this daily, it means positivity. So we have to be open to that. Now, as far as it goes for Apple, when we get into a 30 minute chart, this is a very, very, very positive move. So it's gonna be hard for this to immediately go back into a negative trend, right? So if this actually does curl down, that does mean it can come down. You know, if we experience something crazy, the market's showing that good signal there. So we didn't necessarily make the good structure, I would say to head higher. This got overzealous, this can come down quickly. But all we need to know is if that crosses over on that MACD, okay, there's no room for positivity. There's no reason to take an upward trade. And then if this can just curl up by that center line, you know that this is most likely going to get taken out. You're most likely heading to a higher level. Okay, so if we do all that, we can be ready for the future. We can be paying attention to the signal and say, okay, if this trade does set up, I know how to react. And that's what we want to do on this channel. So it's going to be very hard for Apple to go into a negative trend. It can happen, but I'd really be paying attention to if this thing curls up into positive territory soon for Apple. Now, Tesla, there's, there's a few things to say, but I'm just gonna mainly focus on this. We are still within this little channel that I made a long time ago, right? We made it somewhere in this area. We said, we wanna see if this thing makes a bigger channel. And it really is, and it could be some kind of elongated flag at this point, right? So we need to pay attention to it. The reason we have to pay attention to it is mainly because the RSI is showing, you know, this was a higher point, and then it comes down, and then it goes a little bit flat. Okay, so that tells us that momentum is not the strongest here for Tesla and we easily can start to break down the other direction, right? So we'll see if that's able to happen. This is still very positive, so most likely we will experience more positivity, and we're seeing some daily time frames really, really wanna keep going up. So at this point, we need to pay attention to, is this a reversal signal, or is this still just going to be some kind of pullback into this area to curl back up into positive territory? So the negative thing here is this two-hour divergence really turns it down, turns down the bigger time frames, and goes into that negative trend. But the positive thing is during that, if we get this pullback, does it just curl back up? Does it just do something like this and then give you that signal that we're gonna go higher, right? You always wanna pay attention. You don't wanna get overzealous in one direction. You just wanna say, okay, if this signal shows up, I wanna do this. If the next signal shows up, I need to react and sell that, right? And then you manage the trade. That's what we teach in those courses down in the description you look at something like Amazon, right? Tesla showing, hey, we're kind of at a high level. And I look at Amazon and I immediately see some weird things here. First of all, we're going into the area where we could actually create, right? We talked about this, the left, the head, maybe a big right shoulder over here. What if that happens right now? What if it's already happened, right? So we could see some positivity. That two hour looks like it wants to curl up, but doesn't that look like it's out of steam? We're gonna go into a shorter time frame. But right away, I saw this and, and I didn't necessarily think of this before thinking of what I was gonna say in the video, but I kind of see this 
and I just go, okay, this looks interesting to me because it looks like we're at least seeing some kind of tightness that's following some kind of pattern here. So I'm really paying attention if this thing can break down for Amazon because of the little signals that I'm gonna talk about here in a second uh, with the shorter time frame. So I believe it was, an on, it was on an hourly chart. Yes, the hourly chart here, and you'll, we'll look at the 30 minute too just to see it a little more flowy, but if that can curl over here, show some weakness, that can be the deadness and momentum. You get any kind of bad news behind that. That, you might be dropping down and breaking out of this uh, rising uh, wedge here. So that's something I'd pay attention to. We can look at it on the shorter time frame because it's it's pretty wavy and it looks pretty obvious to me, but it's kind of flat. So it's kind of a hard one to be like, okay, is this going to be the moment? Because it keeps doing these little bridges, right? So it is something to pay attention to if this would roll over early on in the day because the RSI is so steep here, you have to pay attention to it. You're getting tight. So some kind of big move looks like it's coming. And then it's funny because the SPY has barely an expected move. So Friday could get crazy, maybe towards the end of the day. We'll see. We're gonna try to be live tomorrow morning, by the way. So make sure to show up and give a like to the channel, even on this video. NVIDIA I was watching very, very closely because this is the perfect area actually to create that handle. And we talked about this handle last Friday and over the weekend, right? We talked about this pulling down. We talked about the place where it really wanted to make a handle was right here, right? Make that right before that resistance and then really bust through but we went higher, right? We got excited with this and that told me, hey, this might need to do what this was supposed to do right here. It might need to pull down to these levels and we pretty much get there, come down into these levels, which is really nice. We go up, we get that cup, we get that handle, and we try to break through and we start to fail. We don't even really test that high there. So this says I'm close to negative territory. I can go into a negative trend for Tesla. 30 minute curls over, bad things, right? Bad things will happen. But on the other side of that, you see a two hour that is trying to curl up right now. Now these are on negative bars. This is a curl up on, right? A green little dash down there on a red bar, a pretty negative bar there. So would that be a signal that I need to take the swing trade? Most likely I would say no in my book, right? We want this to be a positive green bar. It looks nice. It's breaking through this high and then boom, it heads up towards 125 to get that test. So I'm glad that we were able to find NVIDIA for this bottom here that really helped us out which direction that was going. NVIDIA has really been helping us out with that. But that was a fantastic move that led to what we thought. And now we thought we would get that breakthrough moment We'll see if that 30 minutes is able to rotate back up if it rotates down, because that's gonna be a big deal for NVIDIA. One stock that did it straight up with the gap up, right? It was trying to be NVIDIA. It was trying really hard to be NVIDIA. It got that deep, 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 deep handle. Um, yeah, it was this one right here. So we're paying attention to it because this one actually did break up, curl up on that MACD very firmly and then start to fade by the end of the day. The problem with this move overall for AMD is you created a divergence, which just tells us, hey, the momentum here might not be that strong. Even with this big push up, it might not be that strong here. And we might fade that move Move and this can go into a negative trend. So two hour curls down for AMD, I'm gonna say that's a bad, bad thing. You can start to see dailies rotate back over and that's not good news for AMD. Now what you're hoping for AMD if you're bullish is you're hoping that this 30 minute is high enough to where if it does pull down, it can just get off of this, close that gap and then turn right back up, right? Continue that positive trend. So let's be looking for that early in the morning. It looks like volatility might wanna turn up in the morning and we might see a little bit of a pullback in the morning. Maybe it's really small though because the SPY has a small range. Meta, very wonky look here on the MACD, really violating the divergence that you set up between these two points. Now you're going to make another one. The key thing here is even though it looks wonky on the MACD, look at the RSI. The RSI is still holding it pretty well, right? Coming up just a little bit, but still holding that downward move pretty well. So that is divergence. And that tells us we can see a pullback. Now you did just break out of a channel it's been in through those highs. So we can get that curl down and curl back up. That 30 minute is still very positive. So pay attention if those type of moves do happen, right? That would be kind of a bullish scenario if we get a pullback, but this could just be a two hour that needs to drop and pull back as well for Meta. Meta has a little bit different look to it. So because this two hour is so high, we have to be more open to not necessarily reversal, but but, but for some upside, right? Some, some continuation 
and I feel like I'm repeating my words, some, some, uh, but some continuation with these moves because that is a very, very high MACD at that point. The RSI maybe can get down a little lower, curl back up with this MACD. That would be a nice look for meta. Obviously, if something bad does come out, if something bad does happen because of the signals we're seeing, if we're gonna look at in just a second for the volatility, um, if those do happen, meta can suffer from it. Okay, but that's what we'll look at the bigger time frames. We're gonna look at the bigger time frames on Saturday, so make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Time for AMC and GME. And the funny thing with AMC is this almost looks like a double bottom to me. I'm wondering if that's gonna curl up on Friday and we might see something crazy on Monday. Now that's just an idea, right? We have those levels we need to break through to really get uh, something crazy to happen here. So that is something key to pay attention to. But for now, you need dailies to curl up, right? We need dailies to start to curl back up. You're getting a retest of the 200. Uh, you're really getting those moving averages well above the 200, which is nice, but you need this to be green. So if this can give a green bar here, if we can get a solid green move here, we curl up that MACD, I have some more hope for AMC and GME because GME signal is pretty cool down here. Uh, you don't necessarily have the, you didn't have the divergence on this little blip, but you do now if you would curl up. So I'm wondering if this daily curls up, that's what I'd be paying attention to really for these stocks, GME and AMC, because that is divergence. And now you actually have that divergence right here on the RSI. So you do have it, you're testing that 200. And if that thing can curl up, that would mean it could go into a daily positive trend. A quick note on the dollar and then we're going to get into volatility now the dollar is mainly paying attention to a four hour seeing if that could curl down by the end of the day because i really was leaning towards this i know i didn't have my uh videos out there because of my construction of my house but i was really paying attention to this daily i was like if that daily rotates over soon that can really go test some kind of level like 99 uh, 41 that's really what i was paying attention to this week seeing if we can get a really big dip down people get euphoric people go out of cash but this actually was able to hold up better than expected with the move that we've seen we've seen like a five percent move in a day from things like Nvidia. And then you saw almost a 2%, maybe more than 2% move for the SPY in one day. And this actually held pretty well granted what's happening. So what I wanted to look at was the shorter time frame. So what I really figured here was if that four hour rotates down, I think we go test maybe that level for a wick, right? I think we maybe go test this level really fast. See if that four hour dips down, we make a little four hour divergence, right? That would make a lot of sense. And then we see that before the weekend, uh, even if this just dips down and then we just see that spike up on Monday, that's something that I'm interested in because this is telling me that the move is pretty real, but I want to pay attention if that just rejects because if that rejects, some bad things start to happen, right? This two hour already has divergence and you see how steep that is. Look how steep that is on the dollar. Look at that red line down there. It is very flat. This is telling me that this wants to be a bottom if that two hour rotates up. So I would really pay attention to is this two hour rotated up in the morning because that could mean people are going into cash fast. Now, as we switch over to volatility, the key signal here is the same time frame, the two hour. Really looking at the two hour here, and we showed you the one hour divergence on the SPY, the one hour divergence on the Qs, and the volatility uh, VIX is really showing you that as well. So if these things do start to uh, turn down and the market turns down and then you see volatility spike up volatility might be back and it might be back because this is a two hour might be back on the daily scale where that daily can rotate up really close to the center line and just notice the last time we turned up what happened big spike in volatility so if we can turn up again you might get a bigger one if it's able to break out through this high so I guess the main takeaway here is we do see some macro signals that we're going to go over on Saturday. Make sure you're subscribed. But the shorter time frames, even for right now, going into Friday, do not look the best. And if we're going to head higher, we might need to see a quick little pullback here and before we're able to do that. So that's something I'm paying attention to. I'm seeing some reversal signals out there and I would just pay attention to them. Now, it doesn't mean we can't go higher. Remember, it doesn't mean we it means we have a higher probability right now of seeing some kind of reversal. And we're going to pay attention to that. And we're back in action so we'll be here every single night to tell you guys what's going on with this market and how we're seeing things and what do those signals look like are we going to have a higher likelihood to head up or down that's what we like to do on this channel and i really appreciate you guys being here today thank you guys so much for joining and liking the channel i appreciate it i will be live tomorrow morning so watch out for that and i hope you guys have a fantastic night peace